Hello there. This is going to be a general love reading for all signs. And let me tell you something. Whew. We just had this past weekend the Ring of Fire, New Moon in Libra, Solar Eclipse. And when I tell you, first of all, we know eclipses are powerful. They're wild cards, right? We'll get into that in a second. But first of all, new moons always kick my ass. And this particular new moon has made me so incredibly exhausted. I, I find myself not being able to wake up earlier than, well, I wake up at seven, eight o'clock in the morning every morning, but then I close my eyes, I can't get back, I can't get out of bed till like 10, 10 30, and I'm just like, whoa. And then of course I can't go to sleep till like two o'clock in the morning, one, two o'clock. And so maybe watching Mad Men is not helping as well, but <laughs> because I got sucked into that. It's the first time I started watching Mad Men. But anyways, this is a general love reading for all signs. Um, if you're feeling exhausted, if you're feeling drained, I mean, bitch, welcome to the club. Yes, it, I would be shocked if you didn't feel this energy. I mean, shit, how do you not? Right? It's so thick in the air. So I'm just moving my cards about. It's so thick in the air, the energy. Unlikely. <laughs> you know what unlikely means, right? It means that something is unlikely to happen the way that you think it's going to. Or it's unlikely to be this current job, this current partner, this current thing. It doesn't mean, oh, it's unlikely that you're going to get a great life, bitch. <laughs> it doesn't mean that. It means whatever the fuck is happening right now, it's unlikely to be that. It's kind of like the universe going... right and people get really upset because in their mind they have their they have themselves set on an idea on a person on a thing on a timeline and so when the universe comes in and goes just like that it's like almost undermining our own authority and we tend to take it personal like well why not because there's something better how about that no, it's not that. It's something better. If you believe, take action. Some of you need to take action because you are sitting in something, dragging your feet, prolonging something that should end or that, you know, it's sort of like, well, no no i don't think it is this yeah it is you're right it's unlikely to be that no it's not that it, you you know what you're right realization starts to hit to, to kick in as it fucking should now for many of you realization has kicked in for a minute and then the tower comes in and the tower is external universal energy that comes in to caesar milan that ass which I refer to as tss, tss, to wake you the fuck up, to shake you up like this, to say, what are you doing? You shouldn't be doing that. Why are you still in this relationship? Why are you still prolonging this thing that you should end? Feels like my chest feels a little, mm, and the chest is grief. So some of you guys might be feeling like you're drowning with emotions. Are you trying so hard not to show emotions or, or I'm not going to cry. So you've been bottling the shit up. I mean, why would you do that though? You got to feel it to heal it. Sometimes should we not be crying and be hysterical and emotional? Of course. But then there's times that it's necessary. That's the part of discernment on your part, being able to figure out when to and not to. We don't want to let emotions cloud our mind because then it clouds judgment. So in those cases, it's all about fucking tighten it up. You know what I'm saying? Like, tighten up little soldier. Here we go. 
And sometimes it's like, you gotta feel it. Why do you just feel sad? I don't know, but I feel like I just wanna ball my eyes out. You know when I ball my eyes out, I feel better after. I feel lighter. It feels like a fucking baptismal that just occurred. It feels like, you know what I'm saying? It really does, it, it makes us feel lighter. So maybe there is something in you trying to come out. You're trying to, and, you, and here you are suppressing the shit. Seven of Wands, look at her. She's in some kind of a protective bubble. She's unfuckwithable. Nothing is ruining her vibe. Bitch, don't kill my vibe. Bitch, don't kill my vibe. You can't kill her vibe because she's untouchable. But this can also lead to being overly protective and not letting anybody in. See, there is that balance and tempering again. You shouldn't be letting a fuck face into your life or someone who's going to waste your goddamn time or someone who doesn't reciprocate. Someone who's toxic and uh, no. But something tells me she doesn't let anything in. Maybe not even advice, maybe not even um, different opinions of things. I'm not sure. You saw the lighting just completely change, just brightened up. It's that time of the day. Two of Pentacles. You see this Two of Pentacles card, anytime it comes out, it tells me someone is manifesting something. See how you have the energy of it here and it's realistic here? They're manifesting something. That's what that card means. You're manifesting so, an idea of something or manifesting an actual person. Yeah, you're, de you're definitely manifesting a person, the chariot and the king of cups. I mean, dare I say they're fucking Cancerian, but they don't have to be. King of cups could be water, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, but it could be any fucker. There's someone who is feeling something and what's incredible about this, right? Is these two people have their eyes closed. But you can see both of them have a light that's coming from them, right? A light from within. Crack is how the light gets in is what they say. So these two people are probably on some sort of spiritual journey and yada who yada ha, okay? They have not met yet for some. And for some who have crossed paths, it would have been very brief. Reminds me of like the movie, um, You've Got Mail. How you know how before they really met, even in the chat room, um, they kind of ran in the same circles, walked the same streets of New York, knew the same people, were like all in the same group of, of people and shit. They were bound to meet, they were destined to meet, not just because of the circles they ran in, but because of their vibration they were meant to be, if you wanna be cheesy about this shit, but it's, it's a vibrational thing. These two people here are vibra uh, vibrating at a particular frequency. You know, there's a saying, and I've posted it before on my Twitter, and I've posted it before on Instagram. If two people are following the same vibration, those two people will end up meeting in the same room, is a saying, because it's not personal, it's vibrational. These two people are vibrating at a particular frequency and they're not looking for each other. Can this also be friendship? Non-romantic? Well, fucking duh. Everything is energy. Everything is connection. Does this mean in a new cycle you will be meeting people that will be worthy of being in your life in a more than casual acquaintance way probably but you see how both of them are sitting in this place of peace and they're both not chasing it one day they just open their eyes and there it is because they're going about their business going about their day but you will not find this if you stay stuck in shit meaning you stay stuck in a horrible relationship and you don't leave a job situation you're misaligned like that, right? You're not living your authentic self. You're not living true to yourself of what you really deserve and want. These two fuckers have yet to meet. If you've already met, I told you, it'd be acquaintance, very cash. And when they meet, even if it's friendship, you will know that this is someone that's gonna be quite significant in your life. Now, sometimes is it a slow burn, what they call, uh, it's a slow burn. 
didn't feel this at first. Eventually, over time, we became friends. Oh, eventually, over time, I became attracted to them. Yeah, there's a thing called slow burn. Do I think this is a slow burn? For some, yes. And for some, no. Because it's a general reading. I mean, it's going to be this whole spectrum of how and what and where and when. But it will, it will feel too good to be true. Remember, she's manifesting it. It's only in her dreams. Real as a nice thing. And without you in my dreams. Something she dreams into life. Remember, you had if you believe. If you don't believe shit like that can really happen, then you gonna get the crumbs of the universe. Because those who don't believe in magic will never find it. Isn't that what Roald Dahl said? Roald Dahl is all about dreamers, right? Remember, that's Willy Wonka. That's James and the Giant Peach shit. Those who don't believe in magic will never find it. This is Tim Burton shit very expansive creative minds they believe they've literally brought something from this idea into reality i mean tim burton i mean hello corpse bride edward scissorhands beetlejuice right i mean uh, the list is so goddamn long and then you have Roald Dahl, willy wonka just to name right off the bat if you don't believe in magic could walk right in front of you something's arriving now and you've heard me say this for years because they've channeled this to me for years something's arriving that's already arrived could that be what that is i mean fuck of course meaning you already know the fucker they're on the second floor of your goddamn building of your apartment or your freaking uh, you work with them their day from accounting as i always like to say <sighs> is it a parent on your kid's team uh, one of the teachers at their school. Someone at the gym. Yeah, could be any of those possibilities. Why? Because the universe works in very mysterious fucking ways. <laughs> I'm telling you, the way the universe works, don't, don't count nothing out. Could be someone you sit on a plane, on, literally on a plane going somewhere, two fuckers sitting uh, next to each other. You walk into the same coffee shop at the exact same time, and it's not a coffee shop either of you ever go to. Love and magic works in very mysterious ways. Six of swords. This feminine is moving, either literally because she does have a suitcase, or moving on, moving towards something else. Wherever she's going, she's going alone. She's not taking nobody with her. So again, if she's in a relationship, she's going to be single. If she's moving, she's alone. Being alone is a powerful thing because not everybody can. A lot of people don't know what it's like to be alone. They can't. They hate their own company. When you go through a spiritual journey, you are your own biggest fan. You love yourself so fucking much that you love being alone. And it's not to say that we don't crave human interaction. It's a part of everyday life. But we know that we would rather be alone than be with a group of, of cackling, catty bitches, fake fucking friends, or in a toxic, abusive, or non-abusive, but just toxic, half-assed relationship. Not so much we love ourselves. Is we say, my time and energy is too sacred for this shit. And I'd rather be alone. Because I like being alone. Because I learn something about myself every day. Because I'm my own biggest fan. You know, that kind of a feeling, that's that kind of self-love. 
And it's also refilling our cup. And really, you only know yourself when you're alone. You only know what you like when you're alone. It reminds me of, remember the movie with Julia Roberts, The Runaway Bride? She always liked her eggs the same way her partner did. She didn't know what kind of eggs she liked. She always just went with what they wanted. That one likes scrambled, I like scrambled with them. This one likes over easy, I like that. This one's hard boiled, this one's this. She did not know how she liked her own fucking eggs. And it doesn't sound like it's a big deal, but it is a pretty big fucking deal to not know what you like. You see it in the world. Some people, they, they jump from partner to partner to partner to partner. You know people like that in your life. Jump from partner to partner to partner to partner. They don't let themselves breathe or heal. They don't know what they like. Because they're always so submerged in someone else's energy. They don't know themselves or they don't like themselves. Do they truly, truly, truly love themselves? Or are they searching for something in another person? Are they searching for happiness and joy? Or will I only feel fulfilled when I'm in love? Why? You should be in love with your motherfucking self, first and foremost. And then you can find someone to compliment that. So you don't wanna get caught up in that bullshit. Not now, this is too late in the game, bitch, this is 2023. And at any second, they might send the crack in. At any second. You want to be fucking around right now in this day and age? Come on. Really? Fuck no. You don't want to be wasting your days, your life, in shit relationships, in shit jobs, or with shit people surrounding you. Queen of Pentacles, look at the bitch sitting pretty. She's sitting pretty. Is she chasing a motherfucker? No, she ain't. Is she hoping th they like me? You can't sit in our table. She says, I don't fucking want to, bitch. I don't want to sit with a, bitch, a bunch of bitches. I want to sit on the table with people that aren't kind to each other, let alone kind to themselves. See the difference there? Of... Being alone, sorry, my son looks growling. Being alone and just being at peace and loving the fuck out of yourself versus I don't know me and I don't know myself. Therefore, I, I need to be a follower and I need somebody to follow and I need to be in a group of fucking hens. Really? Three of Wands, she's waiting. Oh. See, I told you that I was nervous about this. The seven of the seven of wands might make it where you don't let nothing in. Look at her clutching her purse. This is symbolic of not being open. Can't not be open to everything because your blessings can't come in like that, right? You gotta wait and watch for the perfect wave. When the perfect wave comes, ride that motherfucker, bitch. <laughs> literally and metaphorically shit symbolically you don't want to sit on the sand forever ever forever ever and watch everyone else live why are you here are you here to play it safe well we play it safe when necessary we don't take hasty ridiculous fucking risks not when it's not warranted you're here to live make mistakes learn grow interact have fun but keep your circle tight there's any advice I can give a person is keep that circle tight because energy is contagious. I always listen to people in the way they speak and how they speak about other people. Because if I hear the way they speak about other people, I know that that's how they would speak about me. Feels like swans. You have the falcon and the squirrel. So, you know, swans are like a soulmate kind of vibe, right? The one meant to be. I'm getting heavy, like soulmate energy. The squirrel is secretive. 
falcon is rising up and changes some kind of a change that you can't see coming right and it's a third eye here you know you couldn't see it but you could feel it that's for some of you manifesting this motherfucker too can't really see it right we see it in our head in our mind's eye and it's manifesting into the real life i mean yeah some of you it's like i i dreamt this up like i mean it's all birds too here with wings so wings might be really relevant you got venus and the white wolf white wolf is freedom it's believing in your power remember what you had if you believe right if you believe and here you have the hummingbird which talks about lifting up out of negativity being more fucking positive being more open-minded look at the bitch she's so open-minded she's filled with fucking light <sighs> she is so filled with love love of self love of life it's literally pouring out of her this is the empress it talks about venus goddess of love and it's about love of, of self, love of others, but it's about attraction, right? Magnetic attraction. It could be about a magnetism and love and charm. Um, it's abundance too, right? Because the empress, empress symbolizes um, new beginnings and abundance of new beginnings, right? It's also about attraction attraction and attractiveness in ourselves and others someone's remember we said they're not looking and it's like two people when they finally meet or it's finally time for them to make eye contact for that to register because remember they may have seen each other before crossing paths whatever it takes two people at the right moment, at the right time to look each other in the eye and to recognize it. It's you. Wow, that's crazy. I wasn't looking for you. I was happy in my own bubble. See, that's how it works. That's why you see all these people that constantly get into relationships all the time. They don't usually work out because it's not the right person because they're searching for something. They don't just let love come. Love's like a butterfly. Love is like the butterfly, right? You chase it, it runs. Just sit calmly. Call it in with your motherfucking energy and it'll come and sit right on your shoulder, right? All right, let's get into this extended. The extended will be found on Patreon. So below this video, click the word more. It's gonna bring up all the links. I believe it's the second one. It'll be to Patreon, right? Um, what else? Mm, actually, that's pretty much it. <laughs> I'm going blank. I'm sorry. I'm so exhausted. It's the end of the day. Uh, thank you for all of your likes, your shares, and your subscriptions here on YouTube. I will see you guys in the extended on Patreon, okay? Love you guys. Bye.